refugee students from the IT University of Copenhagen. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, effective analysis of C programs by a technique that we call uh, rewriting variability. So this is a joint work with, uh, with Alexandru, so he just finished his PhD. Uh, Alexander is a postdoc and Klaus and Andre uh, professor at ITU. So basically it's a subset of one research group in Copenhagen. So as, as most of you know, a, a, pro a problem family or a solar pro problem line represents a set a family of software systems developed from uh, uh, reusable artifacts. And the idea is that you compose these artifacts in such a way that you can easily automatically generate related programs. So let's say that you have your code, so the C files, you have your image, you have XML files, and you have some you have to have some kind of variability or feature model and also the configuration knowledge or uh, mapping model to, to say that this file or this, uh, yeah, this image or this file uh, belongs to a, a feature so and so, right? So this is the kind of idea. So, and then you can generate these related variants uh, easily and they, this strategy tries to, to decrease uh, the development cost and also the, yeah, as a consequence the maintenance cost and also decrease the time to market once you have all the reusable uh, components and you can easily uh, you can generate different programs for different customers. Uh, the idea is to increase adaptability and to lower cost, right? So by extending, for example, uh, uh, portability to different platforms or hardware. So and then, but also uh, this strategy tries uh, tries to increase the, the quality of the code once you have one component and it, and it will be tested many times uh, for different customers, right? So and among uh, a lot of a lot of different uh, techniques have been proposed or developed to to implement variability or software lines in, in the code level. So, for example, we have uh, object-oriented design patterns. You can use like a strategy, and then you can you can uh, implement your, your variation points, or you can use aspects and and use like for each feature you you you, get, you create an aspect, and then you do this via a separation of concerns. We also have these plugin mechanisms and uh, and so on, right? So, but among those. Uh, one of the most uh, popular, the oldest and simplest is the C preprocessor. And uh, it's really used in, pra in practice, and developers often use C preprocessor to implement this viability or software lines in, in the code level. So, as you can see here, uh, so we have a, uh, so this is code is not. Uh, so you have a feature, so so you have this preprocessor directive like if, def, and if. So, and then we have the feature name, in this case will be the feature expression A and B. And then you can either turn on or turn off, so include or exclude the, the code uh, inside this uh, preprocess directly. In this case, these two codes. In these two codes, right? So you can easily see that if we assume that these features are uh, independently, we can generate different programs. So if we enable A and B, so if we enable feature A and feature B, we get this program down up here. And if we enable only A, we get this program here. So only with this uh, add uh, operator. So if we enable only B, we get this program. And if we disable both, then we get this smaller program here, right? And analyze it, and then you can see that in this, in one particular program, we have we have a bug. So in this case, the the x will be zero at, at this point here. So to to analyze this kind of problem, to analyze problem families or soft problem line is really challenging, and I spent quite some some time uh, understanding how variability affects programmers and programs uh, at the bottom, right? So. Uh, one way of doing is to generate all the configurations and then you, you just check each configuration, each program variant at a time. So
so this this way of doing but you uh, you you might know that these will be slow will blow up at some point once we have so here we have just two configurations but imagine Linux kernel that has uh, 15,000 configurations so you can generate millions of configurations and it's impractical to uh, uh, to analyze each variant at a time so there are a lot of techniques like sampling so you could do like uh, generate random configurations uh, or could, you could do like generate some uh, uh, pairwise or tiwise sampling and, and the other way of doing is to analyze the entire family code uh, at once and this is called uh, family based analysis or variability aware analysis uh, instead of of you uh, analyze each configuration at a time you, you analyze the entire family at once and basically you need to to be the clever uh, passer or type checker or these kind of things to, to deal with these preprocessed directives, right? So, so but, but most, most of the variability of analysis tools are rare, experimental, and usually and often not so fast to, to run in, in, in real systems like Linux. So and also it's it's challenging, hard to build these two these two uh, from scratch. So we have a lot of tools, uh, conventional that we call conventional single program analysis tools like the CDP check, uh, JCC, uh, Pharmacy, uh, Clang, and so forth. We have all developed for decades. And we could we could use them. So the idea here is that we have so we have this program with this family-based program, right? Variability, and then we could we could use a variability aware uh, analyzer like TypeChef, and then we get the, uh, the results, right? So, but as I said, as I mentioned, this is really rare experimental and takes a lot of time to run in, in real files. So what we could do, that's our goal, is to transform this code to uh, so this if that's your normal if, your normal code, and then we get a single uh, program, and then we allow, we use uh, the the conventional off the shelf uh, analysis tools, and then we get the, the, the single results, and then we trace back to the to variability the features. That's our idea. So basically, what we do here, so if you look up here, we have the feature A, will be transformed to a global uh, variable, and then we do like brand, this kind of uh, determinism, just to enforce the analysis tool to consider both paths here, right? Both branches. Uh, and we do the same for, for every feature, and then we just replace if then to so compile time to runtime variability. That's the idea. So, okay, uh, and this leads us to, to, to our concept of, of rewriting variability, which is essentially a program transformation, which takes a, a program with if defs and transforms to a program with ordinary ifs. That's the idea of transformation. But how, how does it work, right? So, we designed a bunch of, of, of transformations. So this is the first one. So we call a conditional variable declaration. And, and we have here, so let's say that we have this code. So we have a variable x, uh, can be either int or long, depends on, on the feature a, right? So and then what we do, we, we, we put, we reconfigure this code and we put like int x of a, x on the line a and long x not a so we call the, the variability in the the fit in the variable name right so and then we you can so we we prove that for for the imp bar so we extend the imp and we prove that for for imp uh, bar language so but you can say and how about the use right so we also have another rules called like conditional variable usage so we take this let's say that we send the, the same program as before and now we add an assignment here and this is y we see is x right how can we code this so we go like this so we test for a uh, so a as i mentioned is is declared uh, globally right so we test for a and then if a is one is true 
then we go here and then we access x of a. Otherwise, we access f x not a, right? That's the kind of, of idea, the idea of transformation. So we have a lot of a lot of transformation, uh, other transformations. For example, we have this uh, guarding line. So assuming that these a and b are mutually ex exclusive, this feature, then we can just do like a disjunction. And do a disjunction here uh, of the features. And in the end, we also have so we deal with variables, type devs, uh, structures. Uh, uh, and, and functions, and then in the end we we have this if def elimination. So if everything uh, didn't match, so we just turn. So we we already know that we uh, deal with scoping and everything. So now we just turn uh, if def to normal if like this. So this is the last. So which means that the order matters in in, in this case. Uh, so I want to point out one. One specific rule that's the conditional struct fields. This, uh, so you can you have a structure here. You have two fields, and one F two is that depends on, on A, right, on a feature. So now, what do we do by now? So we are improving that. But what do we do by now is we duplicate the structure. So we put S of S A and S not A, and then we put the the, the fields accordingly. But you can see that in, in the worst case, this will blow up at some point. Right, in the number of features. So, however, we, we did an evaluation and show uh, later. Uh, this does not happen in practice, uh, but we need to test more. It was only a preliminary evaluation. We are working on that to do uh, a clever uh, rewriting. Uh, so, we implemented this idea, the rewrite variability in a tool we call the C reconfigurator. So, it's available on GitHub. So. So you can yeah you can see set up and use and try to, to uh, feel free to to reach me or to send them a thing email or leave bugs and everything. Uh, so we use uh, super C for us the the C code as well as the the, the preprocessor the feature right the preprocessor directives and we implement our analysis uh, our transformations uh, uh, using Xten. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the preliminary evaluation that we did. So, so we asked two questions. So the first one, how precise is our technique? So which mean that, uh, so does, does this rewriting variability allow to transform the code and preserve the semantic of the, of the program, include the all execution trace, include the, the erroneous one? And uh, the second one, the second question was how efficient is this uh, is the analysis tools to find a bug using our reconfigured program? So, so the, so we use three subsystems. Uh, so we use Linux, uh, Bizbox, and LibSSH. So basically, we evaluated uh, on 36 files from those systems. So 33 was CD5 files we took from the uh, variability database, uh, VBDB. So it's a uh, variability bugs database. So we know that each file contains a bug. And also we took three real files from LibSSH, which has a which which, which ha have a bug as well. So so we know up front that the, the program, each file has a bug. And the idea of the evaluation was to transform the code using our tool and then we preserve the bug, right? And then we use some analysis tools. So in this case, we use from C, Clang, and LMC, and then we measure time and accuracy to, to respond to, to the switch question, right? About uh, performance and about uh, accuracy, right? So from C is a framework for, for sub analysis, for instance, our SQL. Uh, Clang, so the Clang project has the Clang uh, compiler front end, but also has a GCC, has a, there is uh, some analysis. And we also use, on top of that, LMC, it's a valid model checker for finding bugs uh, in C. Uh, so that was the, the idea of the experiment. So, and then, and then uh, uh, we can see here some of the subject files. So we have, for each file, we have the bug type, the feature, the number of features, 
the lines of code, we have the size, so we compute the size before and after our, our transformations. So, and we have the hash, and this is a clickable in the, in the, the paper, and you go directly to the, the file, or to the, the bug. So, and as you can see here, we have different, uh, different types of bugs. So we have uh, no point of reference, bubble flow, reader of bounds, uh, uninitialized, undefined uh, variables, uh, and incompatible type, and so on. And also we have different number of features, so some file has like one, just one feature, but uh, other have five, six features, and, and up to seven, I think so. So and, the, so, and then the size here, so before, so we compute the, the size in kilobytes, so we have before and after, and we, we observe that most of the, the so grows as expected, but not terribly so. So, in reality, it grows, but not terribly so, uh, at least for these for this, uh, files, right? So let's look at the results. So we have a, a table here for pharmacy, and then we have, so we have the two main columns, so we have the bug variant. So what we did, in the, we generate a, a, the bug variant that we know that has a bug up front, right? And then we, we analyze and then we, we run pharmacy, and then we analyze the accuracy and the time for pharmacy to find that bug. And then we reconfigure the file using our rewriting variability, and then we run, we run again pharmacy uh, and compute the time and accuracy. And also we did with brute force. So basically we have, so this means accuracy, this is the analysis time, then we have the all time, this is the brute force time, so we consider the, the feature model, and then we just ran from a C uh, in every configuration. Uh, so a check mark means that the bug was foul. Uh, so X means that the bug will not foul, uh, and then in means that it's inconclusive. Uh, inconclusive means that the analysis, so this depends on the analysis. In, in case of pharmacy, I remember uh, in this file, uh, we, we encounter uh, an initialized variable, and then when we pass, when we transform uh, using our uh, rewrite variability, so the initialized variable uh, now depends on uh, the, the interaction of, of, of the if, if branches. And then pharmacy uh, performs a, 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 a probably a May analysis, or this is the difference between May and mass analysis. And, and then pharmacy is set in, in the bottom point that the variable is either five, let's say, or bottom, in this case, initialized. So this is inconclusive because the pharmacy did not uh, pinpoint that the, the bug was a bug. If, but only tells us a warning, so that's why we put in conclusion here. So, so the first research question is about how precise is our technique. So, if you look at these highlight columns, you can see that most. So we have here the real files. So we have three real files, and then we can see that most of the of the instances are check mark. Which means, so we conclude that in terms of variability, in terms of precision, uh, our tool seems to, to transform the family code by preserving all the, the, the execution trace, including the, the erroneous trace, right, from the, from the bug and variant. So, and in fact, uh, in total, the analysis tool could detect like 30 out of 36 bugs, so which means that this is around 83% of the bugs. And, and you may ask, but how about the other six bugs that were not detected by the, the analysis tool, right? So I mentioned one kind was incon inconclusive, uh, that's because of the, the analysis tool, performs a may or a may analysis, not a must, or this kind of things. But are, we also look at the, the files and here we have an example, so the file to, that pharmacy did not find a bug. And then this is just, uh, just a, a simplification of the file, 
and then we have we uh, have a function which returns zero, and then inside another function we have some uh, if def, and then we have the call one call to that function. But this call is as we do a bare file analysis, this call is the unique call, it's the only call that in, in that file. So in this case, you can imagine that without this, if you disable this feature, then it will be a dead call, right? Then it will be a dead call. But in our configuration, in our uh, reconfiguration, so we pass this if, if and that to if and not arm, right? Uh, and then these terms, to be always present. It's not, it's not that good anymore. So basically, in our case, our reconfiguration did not ma uh, mask the, the problem, right? So in, such, in this case, like that code and usual variable, what we, what we do with the right variability, we make it explicit, and, and the analysis tools cannot find uh, this kind of bugs. So this is an outside of, of the real life variability. So, but back to the research question. So we have the second one is about precision, right? So if, so let's say that we look at this file one, and, and we have here that in the body variant, from a C spent two, 218 milliseconds to find a bug. So this is a millisecond, right? So 218 milliseconds to find a bug. And in our file, in our reconfigured file, which encode all the, the program family code, right? So it took only a bit, a bit more, two, 235 uh, milliseconds. <coughs> so, and this holds for, for, the, for most of the cases, right? So you can see this holds for the simplified file files, like this one, and also for the real files. So we can see like one second here, one second here, right? And this kind of thing. So, so in, in general, we, we, we found that the performance of, a, of analyzing one uh, reconfigured code, our reconfigured code, is, is comparable to analyze only one variant. In this case, the bug variant. So which means that we can, so if we compare to the, the brute force, uh, so here we, we, we put the, the, the time for the brute force, so here it's almost seven seconds, right? So we get a, a speed up proportional to the number of, of variants. So this is quite a significant result, but, but still, we need to test in real, real times. Uh, so in summary, uh, all this, the convention of the shelf tools that we use uh, detect successfully and efficiently most of the bugs uh, on the reconfigured file as well as on the, the single variant code and and basically I to conclude I showed you the two strategies to analyze uh, product families so one is product base and one is family base so I also I also showed you. Uh, I also showed our approach, right? Our view of our approach. Instead of we do this path, we do like we transform to single program, and then we get the results, uh, and then we test back. And uh, that presents also some uh, transformation, very pretty great transformation, and some results in terms of time and accuracy. So yeah, thanks for that. So I was wondering, when a bug is found using your approach, how easy is it to pinpoint and play the, the right feature configuration? That's that's an interesting question. Yes. So so I mentioned so I mentioned here in the evaluation. Uh, this, this here, but I mentioned the evaluation that we in our evaluation we do this trace here, but not trace back to the feature. So for example, for the, for the simplify file was easy, so we could say, uh, we could uh, put side by side and be point, and say, okay, this was the configuration, was the feature, just depends on the condition of the, the feature of the bug, right? 
But for the real files, it's like 1,000 lines of code, and then all these feature interactions, and then we just rely on the, on the results, and then we didn't trace it back. But we are working on how to trace back to the... So we clearly have a loss of precision, right? But we can, we can somehow trace back. But so maybe I can complete on that. So for each declaration, we also annotate the presence condition under each which it should be included in the real code. So you can look at that presence condition, figure out which subset of the variability space exists. And you can also look at the other variables that exist in the ifs inside. So there is still some manual work, but so would it would be if you looked at the original source. Yeah, yes, we are working on that, right? So we have, like, when you pass each transformation, we put, like, a hash, uh, this, this feature, this code belongs to that feature, and then we can trace it back uh, at some point. But your the analysis that you intend this for are not path sensitive. Mm -hmm. Sorry? The analysis that you intend to use your approach with, they are not path sensitive. And I guess that's what you would need in order to keep this different, to keep the, the values for different feature configurations apart from it. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the problem with yeah. MSP, for example. Yeah. But it depends on the tool that you use, right? You can use it with any tool, even with some path sensitive tools. Any other question? Yeah, just like well, one thing. I have one question. So basically, I, that I understood that uh, you assume that you have a bunch of nice uh, program, static program analysis tool for a uh, single program, yeah. but these two don't support, you know, hash if there's a Yes, that's the the the. That that's the motivation, right? Yeah, I was wondering that uh, is technically is it possible to develop some static analysis too, which understand you know C direct pre processor directed. Is that right? Or yeah, yeah. So so that's the motivation of our rule. So basically, instead of reinventing the wheel. We could use this uh, off-the-shelf tool, single program tools like Promacy, CBT Check, uh, GCC, Clang, and so forth, to analyze our problem family instead of build uh, one variability of a parser type system and this analysis, right? Data flow analysis and control flow analysis. That's the, the main uh, motivation of our So these tools are, are there for decades. That mature, and we can use to find these kind of bugs. The other question is that uh, we also use the preprocessor directives to support multiple applications like ARM and Windows, Mac, and Mac OS, and everything. So I think it's not easy to process these kind of source files. Is that right? Or is it so easy? Do you have any ideas to improve your tool to support these files? Yeah, so um, in this kind of architectural platforms, what we do is like we transform, basically it's duplicated code, right? So by now we our transformation basically duplication, right? So we duplicate the code and then we do some uh, abstractions, so we do a projection. So we can project on Linux, uh, we can project on Windows, right? And this kind of thing that we analyze. So this is how we handle by now. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah,